So epigenetics is actually not one thing. It's a collection of things. It's an umbrella term that refers to different types of mechanisms. And you can think of these as sort of different types of chemical tags. And these chemical tags, they regulate where in your body and when in time or in your lifetime, your genes are expressed. So by expressed, I mean whether they're switched on or off, or you can think of it usually as more of a volume tuner, you know, to what extent is that gene really being activated or deactivated. And these tags, they do this not by actually changing your DNA sequence at all, but by sticking to the DNA sequence. So now I come to maybe, I think, the, the part that might be most of interest to uh, the attitude community here, and that's, well, how does epigenetics actually relate to ADHD? And I have to uh, just be upfront that this is really a very, very, very new area of research. There have been some studies done in the past years, but the, the most powered, uh, well-designed studies are only emerging now in the past couple of years. So we, we, there's certainly more questions that there are answers. So I only have a couple of slides, but um, I wanted to uh, highlight really some of the interesting findings that are starting to emerge from this work. So most studies actually uh, at the moment have been based on clinical samples. So here you have, for example, a group typically of, of children. Um, I think there's been yeah, seven studies published so far with a very uh, variable sample size. The smallest study was only 14 individuals, the largest was 500, but divided between uh, a group who had already received a diagnosis of ADHD versus a control group. And usually what these studies do is that they take a sample, uh, maybe a blood sample or saliva or buccal sample, and try to understand what are the are there any epigenetic differences uh, between these two groups uh, uh, diagnosed with ADHD versus controlled. And here I want to pause one second to, to tell you um, this is important. So most studies, well, all studies in this area have to rely on easily accessible tissues, blood, saliva, buccal, uh, tissues that we can access in living individuals. But these are not the most relevant tissues for what we're interested in, right? Because ADHD being very related to neurodevelopment, what you'd want to be able to do is see what the epigenetic patterns are in the brain. But that is just not possible clearly because we cannot just get a brain sample and look at um, epigenetic patterns. So we have to rely on peripheral samples. And this is important because we just don't know to what extent what we see in blood really reflects what's going on in the brain, which is the main organ of interest. So it might be useful for prediction or for, uh, man, you know, for various clinical applications. But if you really want to go to mechanisms, this is a challenge because we don't know what's happening in the brain itself. And so far, these studies really have have not shown a very, very strong signal. So there certainly are associations between um, uh, epigenetic marks and ADHD in these clinical samples, but they're not very strong. Most of these have not really replicated across these different studies, but there are some exceptions. So for example, there's this one gene called VPR2. This has, uh, the, the chemical tags on this gene have actually been identified by several of these studies. So it really adds confidence that it could be implicated in, in ADHD. And this is a gene that produces a, a small neuropeptide, so it acts as both a neurotransmitter as well as a hormone in the brain. And previous studies have shown that it is important for regulating mood behavior and circadian uh, rhythm. And actually, uh, studies have also shown that it is um, epigenetically, this gene is actually sensitive to a number of environmental, early environmental influences that we know are also implicated in ADHD. So, um, so the, the epigenetic status of this gene might be potentially also regulated by your environment. And interestingly, uh, these studies have shown that actually there's, there seems to be a stronger relationship between the epigenetic marks in this gene and ADHD in, in males compared to females. But at the moment, it's quite unclear whether that's reflecting a true biological sex difference, for example, or whether it reflects the fact that clinical samples tend to have many more males. So the, the group of individuals um, with a diagnosis of ADHD, they tend to usually have many more males and females because that sort of reflects, particularly in childhood, uh, the, the, the different um, uh, likelihood of receiving a diagnosis between with boys being more likely to receive it than girls. 